G'day you guys, welcome to Pete vs Plants. I am Pete and uh, these are the plants. I was about to say I am plants, but I am not plants. Today we have a chores episode and we're gonna start it with an unboxing. So this arrived just today and I dropped my wife off at work and came racing home at legal speeds uh, in order to open this because I do know what it is, but I am, yeah, I'm excited to see what it looks like in person. So I grabbed this from Facebook Marketplace oh, last week, actually over the weekend, and I had been wanting one of these for a while. It is a Monstera, and I wonder if you guys will be able to pick what kind of Monstera it is, assuming that it is, it has come in good, uh, good nick. So it's been packed really well. He's uh, sticky taped down paper over the top of the plant, which is really good. It's obviously not moved around at all inside the package. Just have to be careful unpackaging it in order to avoid damaging it. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so just give me a sec, guys. Man, it smells like perfume in here too. Maybe he's uh, giving it a bit of a perfume spritzing as well. All right, I'm trying to work out where are the Ziplocs that are at the back here. Okay, one, two. Take these guys off. So, there you are. Any idea what this is? It's not an Aurea. I wonder if that helps you at all. Guess what this is? This is actually a Thai constellation. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think it, right? But there are yellow form Thai constellations and I've wanted one of these for a while. Now, the backstory here is that when I saw this, I spoke to the person selling it and was like, it does look like an Aurea. Like I can't, at the moment, I can't tell the difference between this and an Aurea and I will try and find photos to show you guys on screen of the sort of more mature forms of each of these so that you can hopefully see that there is a bit of a difference in appearance. Um, and the annoying thing was that he didn't have the image of the mother plant because he had purchased it, I think, you know, I don't know how long ago, but maybe months ago and was just deciding to sell it obviously. And yeah, he had gotten it. I don't know if he had seen the mother plant and um, just didn't happen to have a picture of it or if he had just taken the person at their word. Either way, I ended up saying to him, look, I'll, I'll purchase it because one, I like Aureas anyway. And two, I definitely want a yellow tie in my collection at some point. They're just beautiful plants when they grow out. But I said, look, and, the, and the, the backstory is, let me unwrap this, and the backstory is, so I jumped on it because I saw it for sale for $250 and I was like, if that's a yellow tie, that is ridiculous. That is ridiculously cheap. So yellow ties, there are some for sale at the moment, probably more mature than this with maybe three or four leaves, about the same size though, you know, sort of a bit, a bit further up here with a few more leaves, but Usually the deal is that it was once a huge plant and they've taken the top of it and they're going for anywhere between $1,300 to maybe $2,000. At least that's what people are asking for those plants. They are beautiful plants, but when I saw that this one was $250 that the person was asking for, I was like, you got to be kidding me. Like, does this person know what he has or is it a scam? So I was talking to him and I was like, look, I'll buy it. You know, I can see that it's a variegated Monstera, Aurea or yellow tie, I'll take the chance at $250 because that's a bargain for even an Aurea. An Aurea this size would usually be about three to 400 bucks anyway, at least, given the prices currently. So I said to him like, sold, sold, I'll buy it for 250. And he got back to me, sorry guys, if this is making a heap of noise, look at that free chopstick as well. He got back to me within about 30 minutes and was like, look, I've taken it down. I had a few people messaging me about this. Uh, but my friend has told me that I have undervalued the plant. And I was like, so 300, 300. <laughs> I had a chat to him and was like, okay, look, in all honesty, if this is definitely a yellow tie, as you say, and you can show me the mother plant image, it's probably worth five to $600 for a single leaf cutting of this size, right? And I said, I'll 
be willing to give you 500 bucks for it if you can show me the mother plant. If you can show me the mother plant and I can definitely see, that, oh yeah, this is definitely a, um, a yellow tie. He said, look, I don't have that and I can't, I can't definitively really prove that it is. Um, so we went back and forth. He was a lovely guy and I said, at the end of the day, I'm willing to give you 450 for it. And that's what I ended up paying with postage included um, because I just said, look, I, I want to take the chance, but I also don't want to um, spend more than it's worth and find out that it's an Aurea when I grow it out. So yeah, anyway, he ended up digging up some more photos. Somehow I think he must have contacted the person who had the original plant and asked for some photos from them and sent me them and they definitely did look like a yellow tie. So that was why I ended up saying, you know what, I'll just, I'll take, I'll take the chance. You seem like a nice person. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Um, it sounds like, you know, the person that sold it to you was, was honest too. So fingers crossed anyway, long story short guys, this is hopefully a yellow tie constellation. So I'm looking forward to growing this out and seeing what happens. The roots were absolutely beautiful on this thing too. It's in a very chunky aeroid mix. I'm gonna actually give it a water because I can feel and I can see that this is incredibly dry. So I'm gonna set you guys up there and I'll grab my, turn the light on so you can see a bit better. I will grab my nutrient solution and give it a decent spritzing. Now what I do normally when the solution, the solution, when the soil is really, really dry like this, I will just give it a thorough, 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 thorough watering, like over the top, pun intended. <laughs> and then I let the water sort of come off. I've pushed the plug in here. I let the water come off and accumulate and I kind of give it a second go. So I will let it sort of, let me just uh, angle this for you guys so that you can see what's going on. Um, I will let the water come out because it usually comes out really quickly and doesn't kind of like really thoroughly drench the soil. I'll, I'll let it come off and then I kind of just sit the, the plant in these pots too that are brilliant. They fit right into that um, plug section there. It's amazing. So the water level comes up and I'll leave it there for 10 or 15 minutes to just kind of really... Um, just to really soak up as much of that moisture as possible because yeah, when you do have these really coarse aeroid mixes, the excess water does just kind of come straight out even if it is completely drenched. So I just want to make sure that it's had a thorough drenching and um, the plant will be able to hopefully take off. So anyway, that was the first chore. We have hopefully a yellow tie constellation. And if not, if it is an Aurea and I have overpaid for it, it doesn't bother me too much because it's one of those things where you're just like, all right, I'll just grow it out for a few months until I have, you know, several plants that I can, well, several cuttings that I can take and hopefully root them and have plants and then sell them for more than the original price that I paid. Okay, so I thought I probably should show you the Monstera Aurea compared to this yellow tie. So this is the yellow tie and this is a Monstera Aurea that I have. Um, so I bought this one probably about four months ago, maybe three or four months ago for, I think it was about 350 bucks, so a bit cheaper than this, but it only had these three leaves initially and it was looking in this condition, which was how I got it for sort of the deal that I ended up getting it for, but it's been pretty prolific and has pushed out quite a few leaves and is working on yet another leaf. Um, so it's growing fast, 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 fast. And you can see the cool thing here is this one is just starting to really harden off and you'll see that yellow here the yellow that you would see on the other leaves that have hardened off is slowly coming in and it had shot out quite a few of these half moons, but unfortunately within like a few, maybe a week or so of it hardening off, it just started dying on that side and I was like, no! So, you know, and it's under probably 65% humidity. Anyway, so there you go. These, t this is why it's so hard to tell, <laughs> right? Like. You'll know when you grow it out a little larger, but for now, that is why I wasn't really willing to take the chance um, at paying full price for the uh, supposed yellow tie, because it could be just one of these. Now, the next task that I have is dealing with my variegated string of hearts. So this thing, I've only had this thing for probably four, maybe five months. 
and it has just gone berserk. The leaves were, or the vines were sort of originally about here. And since then it's grown all the way down here and it's now growing along the ground there. I don't know if you can see it sort of sneaking through here. So I kind of don't want to put it up on the shelf too much higher because I don't want the top to kind of recede or, you know, go bald like me, right? So I think what I'm going to do is just chop it about here, propagate everything below, and then try and eventually put them in the top of the plant here so that it gets fuller and fuller and fuller. All right, so here we are. Uh, managed to get it out in one piece, I think. Although, yeah, they are prolific growers. And man, look at this. I really never expected it to go this pink. Like that is just insanity. Far out. I've been watching a few of Summer Rain's videos on YouTube and she shows these plants. And I'm always like, have they just like oversaturated the video like crazy in order to make these pop a little more? But <laughs> doesn't seem like it. Okay, so the plan is that I have a prop box here that I made or made up, didn't actually make the plastic, uh, yesterday. So I just hydrated that moss. It's been sitting in there overnight, mainly because I wanted to do this as a video. I was kind of doing some chores last night. Can never help myself, but I was like, yeah, I should probably do this as a video. Uh, anyway, so I have to decide how far down these vines I kind of want to chop. And then I think we'll just chop them all evenly at about the same length. So I reckon we do it at about here where these ones are coming down to. So I might just do it one big cut across all of them here. Yeah, let's just do that. Boom, there we go. All right, I'm gonna put this one back and then we can chop up what we've got and propagate it. Oh, that's much better. You fit a lot more nicely now. So there we go, man, I could make myself a nice little rat tail Come down the back here, walking around. Imagine that, I just randomly had this <laughs> accessory hanging off me whilst walking down the street. Another interesting thing you'll notice is that these um, internodal spacings are really spaced out at the bottom when they were weaving their way through the other plants because they were obviously not getting enough light and it was like searching for them. Okay, so what am I gonna do? I guess we're just gonna chuck, uh, chuck. We're gonna cut these up into single nodes and then I'm just gonna chuck them into the prop box here uh, with, I guess I'll put this over here, with the leaves facing upwards. And now, with these sort of tendrils at the base of these vines, I might leave a few nodes because I imagine that these tiny little leaves probably aren't enough to sort of get things going. And um, yeah, I guess I'm just gonna sort of try and make sure that they have contact with the moss as I chuck them into the prop box. See, and there's quite a few here that sort of don't have much going on. So they might have a hard time propagating, but it's all a learning process, guys. And you'll have to let me know if you guys have experience propagating a uh, string of hearts. Definitely, definitely leave a comment down below and let me know if there's any tricks to it. At the moment, I'm just going to keep chopping this up and probably removing any of the excess internodal um, spacing. So like, you know, maybe leave an inch or two on each side, cut them into little cuttings like this, and then just um, plonk them onto the moss. So this might take a while, guys. I might just shut up instead of ranting and smash it out, and then we can get on to the next task. So I will fast forward. Okay, last little guy is going in and I should mention I removed all the flowers. You can probably see them here and I got rid of them just because I don't think they're going to help at all. They're just going to be sucking nutrients from the cuttings. I've tried to cut off uh, excess um, internodal spacing though I did leave a few in there with longer internodes just to see what will happen. And yeah, the vine tips I've left in there as well um, with multiple nodes and I'm just going to kind of <laughs> stand up here and kind of push them all down a bit into the moss to make sure that they're getting some good contact with the moss so that those nodes stay moist because I have a feeling that the roots are gonna initially be pretty fine um, for these guys. So now let's come over, give it a bit of a spritzen. We will give it some water. Chuck you guys down here so you can see. Don't mind the kids 
toys and mess and everything like that. So I'm just going to give it a good spray over the top here. There we go. Boom, 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 boom. It's probably enough. Chuck the lid on and then we'll chuck it on the shelf. So there we go. Now I just have to find a cheeky little space for it. That's the problem. That's the problem. We're running out of real estate, guys. Uh, this might be a problem for later. So for now, I think I might just, hmm, I might just leave it on top of another prop box down here for now, guys. So we'll leave it over here and I will deal with that later on. In fact, I'll probably deal with it shortly because I think the next task is going to be going through some of my prop boxes and sorting out some of the things that we have in there ready to be potted up. Just gonna have a cheeky snack quickly. All right, lunch break over. So I've had this one going for a little while and I have some corms that I've noticed in here, but I'm not sure what they are, to be honest. I've got some, so alocasia corms are in here and they have popped these three on the side here and I'm gonna have to grow them out for a little longer to actually work it out. I'm not sure if they're just standard um, black velvets or if they are some of the other alocasias that I have that I repotted and took the corms from because they're, they're not looking too dark. I'm not sure they do kind of have that black alocasia feel, the black velvet, but don't know, don't know. So I'm gonna probably take them out, pot them up uh, we also have some, I think these are just Hartley philodendrons uh, that I was propagating a while back, but as you can see, things have taken off and there are loads and loads and loads of roots here. So I might end up just putting these up together and making a kind of uh, basket out of these. But yeah, it was me sort of fiddling around with wet sticks and seeing wet sticks. Actually, some of them do have leaves, but yeah, seeing how they would go. All right, so I should probably grab a pot to begin with, to be honest. Maybe we'll just pull everything out and then I'll go sort it out. So, I wonder what the easiest way of doing this is gonna be. Perhaps roll up the sleeves and we just take out the lot. Wow. Some of these, yeah, it's so great when you see these like it really, really extensive root systems that have developed from cuttings and you're just like, I did a good job, it survived, it survived. So I think what I'm gonna try and do, what I have in my head is the moss just coming out in one piece, but it may not do that, or it may do it. <laughs> there we go. All right, I'll give you guys a better angle so you can see what's going on here. This will be interesting. Okay, I'll have to do this delicately. So I've got my little alocasias over here. I wonder if I can just pull that apart easily enough. There you go. So yeah, you'll have to let me know what you reckon these are. I'm not 100% sure. They could be black velvets, but I also have a whole bunch of other alocasias and it might help if I gave you um, the species, but yeah, I can't think of them off the top of my head. All right, so we'll put them there. Maybe I'll pot them up individually and then we will take, see if we can separate out all of these um, cuttings of Hartley philodendron, just the standard Hartley philodendron. Wow, and there's some really extensive roots system. Look at that. Some really extensive roots in here. Like, whoo, that one's done pretty well. So I'm gonna try and separate a bunch of the moss from these roots. And you can see, look at that first little leaf. How cute is that? <laughs> Tiny little dude. All right, I'll chuck you over there and we'll just keep working away until we separate everyone out. This one, that's so crazy. So this one has, half of it has rotted off, but it looks like it must have been a growing tip cutting originally that had the leaf come off and it's pushed out a root here. So even though it's sort of rotted off to the side, it um, seems to be surviving. So I guess I'll chuck him in, nothing to lose by seeing if we can get him to survive. Uh, let's keep going. All right, what's gonna be easiest? Here we go. Okay, another one here. Sometimes it's so difficult to work out what's a filament of sphagnum moss and what's a root. There we go. That one's done nicely. And another, so this was actually just a wet stick with no leaf on it. And 
it has since, is there a root coming out or is this just sphagnum moss? I think that's a root. There we go. So that's doing okay. It's amazing to see sometimes how much growth they can have with only a single root that's come out of the cutting. Okay, what's next? I feel that these are all sort of attached to one another. Wow, this one's actually grown heaps. I don't, I don't remember putting in such a long cutting, like not a vine like this. So I have a feeling, I don't know, maybe I did? It must have been a tip cutting and it's just, yeah, it is obviously, there's the tip. Um, but it's just kept pushing out growth from the end here. I think this must have come out. There's a whole bunch of these nodes that have roots that seem to have just popped out after, you know, the few months that it's been in the prop box. Now the difficulty of separating the moss from the roots. And there is a whole bunch of roots here. Wow, okay. Wow, yeah, it's gone to town. I think 50% of the roots that were in the uh, prop box are probably from this one cutting alone. Holy moly. Is that? No, that's a root, that's not moss. I think I just snapped a root. I think I might just leave it like that, guys, because it's a bit difficult and I don't want to do too much damage, but that one's done very well. Okay, looks like this one sort of dealt with itself. Nice, another long, long, long root. It's interesting how long it takes for them to push out secondary roots when they're in prop boxes like this. I guess there is a tiny little bit here, but they obviously just push out one big root and are just like, just keep going, baby. Just keep going, just keep going, just keep bringing in that uh, sweet nutrients and water and we will deal with secondary roots later, mate. We will deal with it later. Okay, and this one's a bit of a, that's uh, an interesting one too, yeah. So we've got multiple leaves that have popped out of this um, cutting as well. So there you go. I guess that's everything that was in here. I'll try and take all the moss and chuck it back into the prop box. I feel like it's always great once you have a prop box that's just working really well. The moss is sort of like full of organisms or, you know, whatever else is in there and it's kind of balanced out, especially after four or five months of just, you know, doing its thing. And you don't have to necessarily worry about fungal infections or mold growing in there, which often happens when you create a new prop box and, you know, potentially put in too much moisture or whatever. And I have a feeling that's because, you know, you've boiled the moss and yeah, you've just got all these things that can come in and just colonize. They can, they can come in and colonize the box, right? There's all of this biological space. All right, so I might try and separate out these little guys gently. They have very fine roots. So yeah, again, you'll have to let me know guys if you, if you know what these guys are, but they are very cute. They do have dark sides to the back, so I reckon I would put my money on them being, um, yeah, the black velvet alocasias. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some vessels for these guys and I will grab a pot to chuck the heartleaf philodendrons into. Okay, we got some jars. Pull the tire out of the water and let that drain off. Okay, so I'm gonna use some of these small jars. I would chuck sphagnum moss in these with these little dudes, but because their root systems are so fine, I think what I'm actually gonna use is some perlite uh, because, and this is ultra chunky perlite, it's a lot easier to pull that out of the jar and to separate it from the roots than it is with sphagnum moss. The only thing I'm not sort of sure about is what happens if you accidentally leave a bit of sphagnum moss on the sort of root system inside of your semi-hydro. Uh, it should be okay, I imagine, but fingers crossed. All right, so I'm gonna go and give this a bit of a rinse, one to get the dust off, but also I want to hydrate it because it tends to soak up quite a bit of water I've found guys and you'll actually see it sink when it has loads and loads and loads of water in it. So yeah, perlite is interesting stuff. So I'm just gonna pour this into the sink here. It's all so chunky that it gets caught in the uh, strainer that I've got at the bottom here. So I don't have to worry about 
much, if any, of it going down the sink. And the good thing is initially too, it does float. <laughs> so you can kind of, um, I don't know, yeah, you, you can kind of separate it out pretty easily initially. Um, so I'm just gonna let it sit there and rinse for a bit. Maybe whilst it's doing that, we will go back to the table and try and separate out the moss from the roots on some of these guys and we'll see how we go. I'm actually kind of surprised at how limited the root system is on these guys considering they've already popped out a leaf. Like I did this with some stingray alocasias that I might show you shortly but you can check out the video where we did that previously, I'll link it above. And the root systems on them just seem to go off. They seem to go off like a frog in a sock, guys. Like they, when I took the corms off the plant, the roots were already insane. And then I chucked them into a prop box and within, I think it was like two weeks, they had shot out leaves, multiple leaves. And so I just potted them up. But I was so impressed at how quickly that happened. Um, okay. This one's got a nice little root system there. It's pretty cool. It's probably the cutest one. Oh, spoke too soon. I reckon this one's going to be cuter and have an even better root system. So I'm just sort of gently tugging on the moss. Oh man, and we have some live sphagnum moss. How cool is that? I don't think I've actually noticed any live sphagnum moss before, but look at that. We, um, yeah, there's a whole bunch here. We have revived it, guys. So I imagine you can see it's green and growing upwards. That's pretty cool. I might keep that to the side. I wonder if I've got any more here. There's a little bit. Uh, you know what, we can just chuck it back in the prop box and I guess it'll keep doing its thing. But that's pretty cool. I haven't actually revived sphagnum moss before. Took a while though, it took quite a while. It's really cool though that it was like on the roots of this alocasia. Still some here that's alive. Okay, got most of you off without doing too much damage. I think that's probably about as good as we're gonna get. So there's that little dude. That's really cool. Look at those roots. So hopefully these go really well in the perlite. Okay. So I guess I'll bring the perlite back over here and we can do the potting up over here. Okay, so this should be sort of, and it's a bit white. You might not be able to see very well because of the light, but that is partially hydrated uh, perlite. And you'll, yeah, it's kind of got this really funny consistency. It kind of freaks me out a bit because it all sticks to your hands. I don't know, it's very, um. It's a very weird sensation and you can kind of like pick these things up, this glass and it just sticks to your hands. I don't know, maybe I'm weird. Anyway, so what I am going to do is chuck, probably fill these guys up about halfway with perlite and then chuck the little dudes in, the little alocasias in there. Okay, that's the first one. So there we go bright but hopefully you guys can see okay. Maybe I'll chuck in a little bit more perlite. As long as this guy's root system isn't too crazy and developed. And then I will chuck this on top. Ugh. Just talk about finicky. And it's annoying because once this stuff is wet it does kind of get a lot harder to just roll roll off your hand because <laughs> it sort of just gets stuck to your, to your fingertips and everything and just end up going everywhere. Maybe I need to stop just being so precious and let it just do its thing. All right, so there we go. Unknown allocation number one. That is where we are currently at. I will probably fill the reservoir up to about here, maybe about halfway because the root system, you can see a little bit of the roots here. Sorry about the brightness. Uh, so I think it's probably sitting in the top third. So there's number one, I'll leave you over here. Hopefully I won't hit you off the uh, table. Maybe this is a little easier, just shoving it in like that. It's probably a bit too much. Alrighty. This one's going in. In you go. And then fill her up. Whoop. Hopefully without tipping her over too much. Cute. Check that out. A little bit of sphagnum moss in there. Stowaway, we've got a stowaway. Oh man, <laughs> how cute is that? <laughs> what a little tiddler, a little tiddler. 
All right, same thing here. Ugh, this one actually has quite a good root system, so I'll try and sink it down a bit more. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Looking good. All right, let's clean up the rest of this perlite. And I will grab my hydro solution and we will fill these guys up. There's a better angle. So this is my hydro solution that I've pre-made and I will show you, I just use this and it's about, I think it's a milliliter per liter. Yeah, I use the second, I don't know if you can see it here, You're not gonna be able to see it, but hydroponic established plants, I use that for. For seedlings, you can dilute it a little bit more. I probably should for these guys because it could be a bit strong, but I guess we'll just see how we go. But yeah, I usually use two milliliters of this stuff in this two liter bottle. Okay, so I'm just going to pour the liquid in. It's pretty self-explanatory and get it to about halfway there, guys. I might flush this again tomorrow if I notice that a lot of dust is still coming off the perlite, but I'll just keep an eye on it and see how we go. Okay, that one may have been a little too much. Oh, no, it's not too bad. It's about halfway up there. Again, sorry about the brightness. I should stop apologizing. You guys know what the deal is. And a little bit more here for this one. There we go. So the roots are just touching the water here at the bottom too. Oh, what a fail. <laughs> oh, what a fail. <laughs> I guess that's what happens when you use jars, guys, and they're a little bit slippery. Okay, so I'm going to do that again. My bad, guys. Pour some of this out. That was embarrassing. Butterfingers. All right. Clean up all this solution too. Oh well, if you're not dirtying the house, you're not you're not doing it right, are you guys? This is just part and parcel of being a plant dad. Okay, where were we? Slick. We were filling you up. Whoop, too much. Might just pull that back into here actually. Bit too much still. That's probably enough, maybe a little less. All right, <laughs> don't drop it again. I'm going to grab a towel and clean this stuff up and then we can get onto the next chore. Now I should add, because I have had these tiny little dudes in effectively 100% humidity inside the prop box, I do kind of transition them into uh, either another prop box or Prop box that has like a lid that's slightly ajar to have the humidity still a little bit higher than just room humidity. So I think I'm gonna chuck them into the prop box that I have here with slightly more mature plants. And to give you a tour here, I've got, I think this is a Melanochrysum. There we go. So actually it could be a Gigas. I don't know, it's hard to tell when these leaves are so small, but the sinus is really high on it and it's not heart leafed. And I know that this one is a gigas here. So these could both be gigas. So they're in there. Um, I've got a laniata that is just not living its best life and came out all uh, elbow. So this was meant to be a, I think it was a mint, a mint variegated uh, Adansonii laniata, but it has just had a really shit time of it, uh, but still seems to be alive. I've got here a bunch of I think they're Forgetii crossed with Magnificum, I'll have to go and check again, but um, Anthuriums that I'm growing out from seed that I bought. And then the rest here are Zabrinas. These were the ones from the video I mentioned earlier and they have just gone off like a frog in a sock. They have just gone bananas, like from Corms. These were the ones that were rooted, check this out. Like they've just gone ballistic guys. So I've been watching these and they're now touching the surface, the, the top of this box. So I realized that I'm gonna have to take them out and find a new home for them. So I'm gonna grab these guys out and I think what I will do is put these guys in to live in the prop box here or the um, seedling tray with the humidity dome on the top just to keep them humid and happy because I have a feeling that if I just take these straight out, the leaves are gonna dry and they'll die. They'll die really quickly. And the last thing I have in here is the Anthurium vichii 
that I got kind of catfished on. So yeah, <laughs> there's that as well. And I can feel these are actually quite heavy. I think there's a bit of extra water in the bottom here. So I might, I might take these out. They seem to be okay. They don't seem to have died, but it does feel like there is quite a bit of moisture in some of these. So I might drain a bit of, uh, drain a bit of that and then chuck everyone back in. Yeah, you can see there's a whole bunch of um, water. I don't know if you can see, it's hard to tell, but a whole bunch of water in there. I'm just gonna pour that off. <sighs> and then put these guys in. And hopefully they keep growing, going crazy and doing well. So we'll see what happens. Okay, I think everyone is back in. You guys all good? Where's the other gigas? There it is. All right, chuck the dome back on. And I'm just making sure when I watch this that there is condensation like this on the side. If that starts disappearing uh, quite quickly, you know that you're probably losing humidity. And I've got the little shutters here open. I've got one open the entire, actually two thirds of the way and the other one open about the same to just let airflow happen. And I honestly don't water this probably more than once every month, month and a half. That's how much it still keeps in here. So I'm gonna chuck this back on the shelf and hopefully those little alocasias keep growing. And I also have to work out what it is that I'm gonna do with these stingrays. I'll probably chuck them up for sale on uh, Facebook or something because I don't think I need this many of them guys, but they are just cute. I might also swap them. I guess we'll see how we go, but we've got some extra ones here. Again, I might put these closer to the humidifier just to make sure that they stay a little moister because they've been in a pretty high humidity, humidity, high humidity environment. So they may suffer a bit initially, but you know, you just have to keep an eye on them. And if they look like they're kind of wilting or drying up, they need a bit more humidity. All right, now the last thing is to deal with these Hartley philodendrons. And I just have to work out what kind of size pot I want to put them in. I, I kind of want a really dense bush of them, to be honest. So I might see if I can fit them into this guy. And I'm wondering if I can just use this lid of this prop box for now, just <laughs> contain the mess a little bit. All right, so I've got my ultra chunky soil mix here. Um, it is worm castings, a little bit of soil, or um, oh, what is it again? Succulent soils, cactus mix, and then really chunky perlite, orchid bark, pumice stones, and sometimes a little bit of charcoal as well. So yeah, it is ultra chunky. Um, yeah, I think that's all there really is to it, guys. Uh, so I'm going to try and fit these dudes in. I guess I'll have to make sure that they stay close to the top, but that the roots all end up in the soil, obviously, deep down as possible whilst the nodes are at the top. Well, look at that one. That is a ripper. What a ripper. Jesus, this is easier said than done. I think the easier task I don't know what I'm going to do with that one. That's going to be a, uh, maybe I can bend it slightly. Yeah, I should be able to. I think what I might need to do is clump them all together and then put them in. But I really would like them in as small a pot as possible to begin with, just to keep things together nicely. Okay, so I might bunch this one here and this one too. Like so, with the growing points facing up. This kind of looks a bit haphazard, guys. I assure you it is. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try, but maybe I should do these ones afterwards. So I'll chuck this one in there too, in the mix. This should do okay, guys. Like it looks like I'm a bit of a, a nuffy, but I think this should end up coming out okay. It's just a matter of getting all of those roots in easily into this smaller, size pot. Um, oh, come on. <laughs> How did you get under there? Oh man, We've got leaves pulling roots up. Then there must be some kind of a device that makes this easier, right? That like puts all of the roots into a single cone shaped thing and then you just shove them into the pot and pull it out and bam, there you go. You know, you're sweet, you're all done. Um, all right, I'm gonna see if I can coax 
this one with the growth point back in too and to sort of curl around the pot a little bit, hopefully without damaging it too much. You should get in there. Oh, come on, mate. <laughs> this is such a mess. <laughs> it should work, guys. <laughs> All right, I, now I have to work out how I'm going to get the soil in there. This should be fun. All right, maybe I'll just use this little, little dude to kind of tip it in. <laughs> the roots and the sphagnum moss and everything is kind of blocking it. <laughs> God, I'm a nuffy. Oh. All right, maybe I can sneak a little bit around that side. Get in there. This is where you almost do wish you had finer soil so that it could just like fall in through all the gaps here more easily. Get in there. I do not know how this is gonna go guys. Hopefully it's okay. <laughs> Hopefully a lot of this soil ends up making its way down into the, into the gaps. Okay. I might have to put some sphagnum moss over the top just to give it a bit of moisture to hold it in there. All right, so I'm just going to give it a squish and a pat. It seems to be getting it to go down a little bit. And then, and then I think, guys, I think that would be the wisest idea to chuck sphagnum moss at the top here to just make sure that that um, moisture stays inside the pot and keeps these roots moist whilst they kind of grip in. So, all right, I might try and twist this one around the edge too and get its roots to go inside the pot. Get in there, mate. Don't snap on me. Please don't snap on me. That looks good. All right, now I'm going to chuck some of this moss just over the top. This will be interesting to see how it goes and if this works as I hope it does to sort of keep everything in and to keep the moisture in as well. Hopefully it does okay. But yeah, this should be, if I can manage it, it should end up a nice little chunky pot with, you know, five or six growth points coming out. And I almost forgot this little dude. I don't have high hopes for this guy, but we'll see what happens. I guess I will wrap his little root in moss and see if I can shove him in there somewhere. I don't know if there's going to be space, guys. <laughs> All right, there we go. Good luck, buddy. <laughs> Good luck, little dude. I wish you all the luck in the world. Okay, and I'm going to put a tiny bit of moss over this side too. <laughs> I don't know how well this is going to work, guys, but I guess we'll see. So there you go. I've chucked a, a layer of moss on the top. The bottom is, I mean, the soil in here is pretty porous, so I'm just gonna have to keep an eye on moisture to make sure that it doesn't dry out too much. It should be pretty obvious by the look of the leaves. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed, this was an interesting one. But it's a plan I'm not too phased about. Initially, I just took the cuttings to see how I would go with propagating them in a prop box, and they did pretty well. So I'm not gonna be too heartbroken if this one bites the dust, but fingers crossed it survives. Anyway, that's probably enough for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to check out this video over here, which YouTube reckons you're going to like next, and I will see you over there. Catch ya.